Hey guys, what's up? This is Become to you from GNA today. So in this video, what I'm going to do today is a comparison between the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522 to the Colt M422. And I've got both generations of the 1522 because I've got them. Just thought it'd be good just to have both of them out here for them to see. All right, first thing is who makes these rifles? The 1522 is actually made by Smith & Wesson in the United States of America. Here's the little thing that was around the handguard on my second gen 1522 Sport, made in the USA. The Colt M4 says right here that it's made in Germany by Carl Walther, but it's not really made by Walther. This rifle is actually made by Umarex, which Umarex owns Walther, so they, their name's not on there illegally or anything like that, but it's actually made by Umarex, and I've got a video that proves that, and I'll link to that right here. All right, second thing, the... 1522 is made nearly entirely out of polymer. The handguard is polymer, the upper receiver is polymer, the lower receiver is polymer, and this receiver extension, which is just one molded piece into the to the lower, is obviously polymer as well. There is a steel ring inside the the throat of the upper receiver where the barrel goes through through to to kind of steady that up and to keep it from pulling through. Now I have done some customization to this, and I know some people don't like that I'm do, that I show these off with customization, but that's what I've done to my rifle, and so um, that that's what I'm going to show it with. But whenever it's necessary, I'll talk about what it comes with stock. So on mine, this was the carbine tactical, which comes with a polymer, just round, standard handguard. I put this quad rail on here, but if you get the M4 Ops version, it comes with a quad rail. So this is aluminum, and on the M4 Ops, the the uh, quad rail obviously is aluminum. And if you get the one that I have that has the carry handle, the tactical carbine, obviously that handguard is polymer. But the upper receiver is is aluminum. The lower receiver is aluminum. The uh, the receiver extension is aluminum. The castle nuts uh, aluminum. The charging handle is even aluminum. So this thing is a metal is a metal rifle. So the weight on these rifles, the original 1522 weighs about five and a half pounds. The new 1522 Sport weighs about five pounds. The Colt M4 weighs a little bit over six pounds. So it, it weighs, it's a little bit heavier. And I've heard people describe it that whenever you hold the, the Colt M4, that it really feels more like holding a real AR. And it does because number one, it's made out of out of metal and because of the weight. So the Colt wins out as far as that particular thing is concerned. Let's talk about pistol grips, butt stocks, and trigger guards. Kind of the thing that people like to upgrade a lot. On my Colt M4, I've put a new MOE K2 grip on it. It's got a Rogers, uh, and I think this is supposed to be a mil spec buttstock it locks down so that's good and I've put a standard uh, polymer magpul trigger guard on here as well now these two things were not particularly easy to put on here on this one I had to drill out a new hole and do a little bit of Dremel work and on this one had to do a little bit of Dremel work to get it to fit in here right as well and I've got videos on that if you're interested in that but you can put a different pistol grip on here. You can put new buttstock. You can put a new trigger guard on here. So that's very nice for the Colt M4. Now on the 1522, same thing. I can put any pistol grip that I want to on here and any buttstock. This trigger guard is molded into the lower. So there's, there's nothing you can do with that. Although it's kind of already bulged down like an enhanced trigger guard. But the good thing about the 1522 is that this takes standard AR-15 uh, pistol grip and buttstock, and there's no work that you have to do to it. This is just a regular MOE pistol grip, and it's no more work than unbolting the other one and putting the other one back in. There are two springs in there that you have to pay attention for, and I've got a video showing how to do that, but it's, it's simple. There's nothing to it. It's literally a two-minute process to change this pistol grip. The buttstock is a mil-spec buttstock, and... Mil spec fits a little bit sloppy on it, not totally rock solid, but it's it's pretty close. Now on the Colt M4, the buttstock is supposed to be a airsoft spec buttstock. 
So if you can get a buttstock that is for airsoft rifle, it should fit on there perfectly. This mil spec, I still had to put a piece of Velcro in there to keep it from wobbling around real bad. And same thing goes for this pistol grip. I've seen several people say if you get a an airsoft pistol grip that it should work on there. I just decided that I was going to get the K2 grip in case I didn't like it, that I could use it on another one of my AR-15s. And same thing goes for the handguard. I tried to replace the handguard on that, and I've got quite a few videos of me failing at that. And I could not ever find an airsoft handguard that is supposed to work on there to work on there. Um, so I ended up just putting that drop-in quad rail for the, for the carbine length on that one. All right, trigger pull weight. The trigger pull on the Colt M4 is about 7.5 to 8.5, maybe even up to 9 pounds. It's not a good trigger. It's not, well, it, well, it's just not. It's not the best trigger. It's a very, very heavy trigger. There is a guy on YouTube who has a video on showing how to reduce the trigger pull weight on that, but it's pretty intimidating because taking just taking the trigger mechanism apart in that thing is pretty difficult, and then he's stoning down stuff, which... He says in there, if you stone it down too much, that it can, you know, cause the kind of problems that you would think have an automatic burst and that type of stuff that you do not want. So that's definitely something that that you would want a gunsmith doing for you. And even at that, it's not going to be a, a precise science. It's still going to be kind of an iffy thing. The trigger pull on the 1522 is about five pounds. Mine's a little bit more than five pounds. And on both of my rifles, they're both around five to five and a half pounds. So uh, it, it's a lighter pull, and it's a, it's a better pull also. On the 1522, when you pull the trigger, it, you can feel a little bit of tension before you can feel it kind of get to the stopping point before it breaks, and it breaks pretty smooth. On the Colt, whenever you pull the trigger, there is zero slack. It goes to hard, and it's just kind of a, an abrupt pull, and it's just, it's just not the best. On the 1522, and this goes for both gens, you can put in nearly any standard AR-15 trigger in here and do it very, very easy. Just knock out the two pins like you would on a regular AR-15. You can put in a CMC trigger, a Timney trigger, a Geisley trigger. Any of those you can put in here very, very easily. On the Colt M4, it's not possible. It's got a proprietary trigger, trigger mechanism, trigger and hammer mechanism. There's just no way to replace that. So the 1522 absolutely wins as far as that's concerned. All right, so let's talk about rifle controls. On the 1522, it's very, very similar to a standard AR-15. You have your safe to fire 90 degree. You have your charging handle. It works. You have a bolt catch that is functional. Mag release is right here. And on last round, the bolt, uh, the magazine holds the bolt open. And then even still with the empty mag in there, I can drop this and it'll drop the bolt for me. So everything on the 1522 is, is as close to a 15, as to a real AR-15 as any tactical 22 gets. On the Colt M4, now I have kind of the second gen, which is a 90 degree. On the first gen Colt M4s, it was 180 degrees. So that was not real cool, but they've changed that now to where it is just 90 degrees. Mag release right over here. Charging handle. This bolt hold, bolt catch is completely cosmetic. It doesn't do anything. It won't let me hold that. There's nothing I can do. I can reach up in here and push the little thing up, little bolt catch up, just reaching up into the magwell and push it to where it holds the bolt open so you can do that. But with the mag in there, it'll hold the bolt. The, the empty mag will hold the bolt open, so that's good. But there's no way to drop this, this bolt at this point. The only way that I can drop it is now by taking out the mag and then letting it ride home. All right, next, let's talk about takedown. And they're pretty similar. On the 1522, it's just like a real AR-15, and the these takedown pins are held captive. So you break that open, and your bolt and charging handle, bolt assembly and charging handle pull out. And then this pivot pin, again, that's held captive, and then you pull free. On the Colt, same thing, and it's better if you loosen off the flash hider, and I'll show you why in a second. But 
The takedown pins are not held captive. And then these two pull apart. Now, <clears throat> one thing I forgot to say is that the uh, Colt M4 does have a dust cover, if that's important to you. Now, from here, it's different because on the 1522, that bolt and charging handle come right out. On this one, Walther, Umarex, Colt do not recommend you taking it past this point. They just tell you to clean it from right here because this does, the bolt does not pull out very easily. So what you have to do is you have to loosen off and completely take off the flash hider. And then you can pull this whole thing out. And then there's your bolt assembly with the barrel and the charging handle. Okay, so this is definitely the point that, uh, that the Smith wins. Is This is the barrel for the Colt M4. It's this tiny little barrel. And I put a caliper on this before and it's about .32. This is the actual barrel on the Smith. It's a solid barrel. So the Smith obviously wins out as far as that's concerned. Although there's nothing really wrong with this. This works fine. Okay, let's talk about magazines for a second. So on the 1522, you have several options for magazines. Smith makes a 10 round and a 25 round magazine. This is kind of the standard 25 round magazine. This one being an FDE. ProMag made a 32 round magazine for this rifle for a long time, although they got sued by Smith because their magazine was so similar to the standard uh, Smith mag that they got sued and they had to stop making those. But there, there are some of those on the market. Plinker Tactical makes a 35 round magazine, which is a decent magazine. And then also Black Dog makes a 50 round drum for the 1522. Now on the Colt M4, there's fewer options. There's a 10-round mag, a 20-round mag, and a 30-round mag that Umarex makes, which the 30 is really a 31-round magazine. But that's really the only options for magazines, which, which is good. Um, but there's no other aftermarket companies that make magazines for, for those type of rifles that I'm aware of. If there is, and you're watching this, let me know about that because I'd like to know. I've got several rifles that use the same magazine as this Colt M4 does. Both magazines are a about the same price. They're both about $20. And if you can find them on sale occasionally, find them for $15. Gun Mag Warehouse has had these on sale for like 12 bucks recently. I bought a few of those from them. But they're going to be about the same price. The The mags for the Colt M4 may be a little bit higher, $1 to $2 just on, on average. But they're going to be about the same price. Also, they're both pretty good quality magazines. Of course, they're completely polymer. But they... They're, they're pretty good quality. They're both very easy to load. They both have these thumb assists that make, make that nice to be able to load real easy. Okay, the 1522, the threading on the barrel is standard half by 28. So if you take off this muzzle device, this flash hider, it is standard half by 28. So you can put any standard AR-15, 223, 556 muzzle device that you want to on here. But be careful. If you take the muzzle device off, make sure that instead of using an upper uh, receiver vice block, that you are using barrel vice jaws. You want to hold this by the barrel because there are two kind of tabs on the barrel that fit into a polymer groove inside of this polymer upper. And if you go to spinning this, it'll spin those tabs through the polymer and it'll tear it up and basically make it useless. So if you do ever want to take the flash hider off of this, make sure you use barrel vice jaws to hold this. The Colt M422, you can put a different muzzle device on there. You saw me thread that one off real easy, but it's not standard threading. But there is an adapter that you can buy that's relatively cheap, 20 25 bucks, that will adapt to a standard half by 28 thread. All right, quickly, let's talk about price. And of course, I'm, I'm in America, so I'm going to talk about American pricing. The 1522, the original one was kind of an expensive rifle. It the the base standard model I think was uh, 519 was the MSRP, and um, I bought mine for like 379. Although I saw Palmetto at one point, uh, probably a year ago now, but they had these on sale for 299. And if you watch occasionally, you'll see them on sale not at 299. I've never seen that again, but 
you'll see the original 1522 on sale sometimes somewhere between 370 and 400 the 1522 sport is even cheaper than the original one the msrp on the standard 1522 sport is 449 and i picked mine up for 375 although i've seen this thing on sale at buds for 338 dollars and it's been on the market at the time of this recording for about four or five weeks now or somewhere around there so this is a pretty good cheap option now where the 1522 used to always be a little bit more expensive the colt m4 is um, it's been on the market for a while and the price on it has fluctuated quite a bit. Standard, it's a pretty expensive rifle. I mean, I see it up around $500 sometimes, but I got mine on sale for $299 and I've seen it on sale several places for $299, but just generally it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But really, I think just, just on average, and if you're just spending maybe two or three or four weeks just waiting for some, one of these to go on sale, you're probably going to see them for about the same price. So none of neither one of them really wins out on that one. Okay, warranty. The warranty, again, for me in America, for this rifle is awesome. I've never had to have any warranty work done, but I've read lots of stories of people doing it. And Smith's turnaround time for doing warranty work is very quick. And from what I've read from lots of people is it's two to three weeks, and this thing has a lifetime warranty. So if something breaks... You call in Smith, they'll send you an RMA, and you'll send it in. They'll fix it for, for no charge. This thing has awesome warranty. On the Colt, to be honest, I do not know what kind of warranty you're going to be able to get with that. It's probably going to be fairly difficult, I imagine. It's not going to be anywhere near the kind of warranty that you're going to have and the, the service you're going to get from Smith. And so... I. For that reason, the Smith definitely wins out. Okay, quickly for accuracy, I think both of them are going to be about the same in as far as accuracy is concerned. This style of rifle is not intended to be a super accurate rifle. They're just not. These rifles are intended to be just bullet hoses, to be able to just squeeze off a whole bunch of rounds and to be trainers possibly for your, for your real AR-15s. I mean, if you wanted a super, super accurate 22 rifle, you would get a bolt-action rifle. They're just inherently more accurate because the action's not having to cycle as the bullet is actually being fired. So for the type of rifle that these are, they're both pretty accurate. And I'm going to say they're both going to be in the same neighborhood. They're going to be, and again, it depends from one rifle to the next because you could have one 15-22 come off of the factory line and take the next one off the factory line and them not be have the exact same accuracy characteristics. So that varies between rifle to rifle whenever you're not buying a super high-end rifle. And so just they're going to be really about the same, anywhere from two to three MOA. It says, B come to you from GNA today. Thanks for watching.